How you doing, folks? Bob and Joe here again. I uh, want to talk to you today. No, I'm not going to quote book, chapter, and verse. You know me. Uh, I want to talk to you about getting baptized. The, uh, the, the how do I say it? It all started with John the Baptist. He was uh, out there in the desert. And uh, thousands upon thousands of people went out there to him. And uh, old John, the way the Bible tells it, he's been a wild man. Wore a clothes made from camel hide, if I remember correctly. And he ate locusts and other stuff to stay alive. Now remember, John was only like six months older than Jesus. More or less. Uh, when his mother was pregnant with him and Mary went to visit, the John leaped inside her womb, inside her belly. Because he knew the presence of the Lord was in the house. He could feel, as a baby, he could feel Jesus in the house. Uh, now, they don't cover a whole lot about John's upbringing. My understanding is... Uh, they sent him off to, to some schooling. And from there he just started proclaiming the Lord's word. That's a short, easy version of it. If you want to know more about him, by all means, look it up, do a study, and let me know what I missed. Uh, or how I was misspoken, whatever. I'm, I'm not above being corrected. But anyway, John's out here in the desert doing all this stuff, and Jesus has heard about him. And he has made comment about him a time or two. John's apostles wanted to leave him and go follow Jesus. And uh, Jesus wound up going out there, and John, he was like, I'm not worthy to wipe your old sandals. I can't baptize you. And he told everybody how he baptized in water. The one was yet to come that would baptize in the spirits. That's interesting. And uh, Jesus told him, he says, you know, you got to do it, dude. You got to baptize me to set the standard for everybody else. Uh, maybe paraphrasing a little bit there. You know, Jesus might not have called him dude. But the point is, Jesus told him, I got to, you got to. This has to happen. So John baptized him, and that's when the dove came down and landed on his shoulder, and, and he, they heard the voice from heaven saying, this is my son that I'm so proud of. You know? So Jesus was baptized. And Jesus told people that they needed to be baptized. They needed to be born again. Now then, some of the touchy stuff that gets people going is uh, when and how. There are different religions that think you baptize at different times. You have those that think you take the baby up to the altar when it's below a certain amount of age. You know, it's a teeny, little bitty infant, tiny thing. And they do the little drops on their heads and that kind of stuff. Folks, uh, to me, that's not baptized. That ain't what the Bible says. Now, if you're taking the child and dedicating the child to God, that's a whole different ballgame. But it still isn't being baptized. Uh, a lot of folks back in the day 
Boy, I love that old place over there. In the middle of a field, log cabin with a little shed. I love places like that. Uh, back in the day, it was real common for people to dedicate their child to God. And uh, I think we need more of it. I wish I had a been. I wish I had dedicated my children to God, but I didn't know about the things at the time. Uh, there are those that think that you have to be baptized at a certain age and all of this. There are those that think regardless how old you are, you can't go to heaven unless you was baptized. Uh, there's all kinds of things out there on it. From what I've gathered out of the Bible, God loves the children. Jesus loves the children. He has told us that. Uh, I believe that there's a special place in Jesus' heart for the children and for the mentally ill. And I know I'm not politically correct. I don't know what else you would call it. But I think Jesus has a soft spot in his heart for them. I don't think that... Well, I know in my heart of hearts from the studying I've done in the Bible I know that Jesus does not hold us all to the same standard to the same rule he has told us that when he talked to us about judging and everything else and I don't think that he's going to uh, condemn any child to hell because they didn't get baptized by the time they was 8 years old it ain't going to happen I'm sorry you're not old enough at that age to make that decision on if you want to serve Jesus Christ the rest of your life. Now there's a few that would be. There are a few, but they are very limited. And you're more the norm if you're not. So, being forced into baptism doesn't work. The, uh, the sprinkling on the head, the only time that I can see that would work is if you're elderly and bedridden and, they, and you haven't accepted the Lord for your Savior and you're doing it pretty much on death's door. I can see something happening there. But, you know, the Bible pretty much says that you're supposed to be submerged and brought up just like Jesus. He was killed and brought back to life. He went into the death. He went. He is descended into hell for a few days and whooped the devil's tail and came back out. Is basically how I think and I, how I call it. Uh, man, come hard to begin to New Mexico for long. The uh, there's no magic words. There's a lot of people that think that if they say the sinner's prayer that we are now forgiven. Uh, I'm sorry, you, you say the sinner's prayer, you, you're meaning it from your heart. If you're just saying the sinner's prayer so that you can go to heaven, that is your whole meaning, you're wrong. It don't work that way. If you're being baptized just so you can go to heaven and be forgiven for some wrongdoing that you ain't even done yet, it don't work that way. It don't work that way at all. It all has to be in the heart. Jesus has to come into your heart. You have to love Jesus with your heart. You have to want to be in his family. That's when the center prayer works. That's because now you are sincere. You really mean it. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please take me with you. I want to be yours. Guide my life. You have to mean that. It's not just words. It's, it's from the heart. And when you go up there and you're dumped under the water, it means something in your heart. 
It's not just a motion that you're going through. If it's just a motion you're going through, you're messing up. You need to stop and regroup and rethink this thing. Something ain't right. So if you're just a child being forced into this, something ain't right. Because it ain't here. It ain't coming from your heart. It's coming from your head where people have put stuff in your head. That ain't where it's at. Jesus is alive in our hearts. Yes, it's something I'm very passionate about. I'm very passionate about it. I, th I would love to see everybody on the right walk with God. I would like to see everybody on that path to heaven. Narrow is the way. Narrow. That means very few people can go through there. The way that I'm hearing uh, some people are being forced into doing it, that is not narrow, that is broad. That means everybody else is doing this. Everybody else has to be baptized by the by the time they're this age. I was baptized by this age. All of my people were baptized by this age. You should be baptized by this age. Does that sound like narrow? Does that sound like the few? Sounds to me like the masses. The masses are not going to heaven. The few are going to heaven. Let me write down my mileage here. I am leaving Arizona. And it is one, two, seven, six, oh. Uh, now then, that being said, I will repeat something I've said before. If you are being forced to be baptized, if you are being made to be baptized, if you are a child and people are using all kinds of talking to persuade you to be baptized, it's not your fault. God is not mad at you, child. God loves the children. Something like this is not your fault. One day we will all be held accountable for all the deeds and words that have been spoken and done by each and every individual. Those that are in power that are forcing you to do this stuff will have to be accountable for what they've done. They will have to be accountable for bullying you. They're going to have to answer up for it. Period. Uh, as you get older, you're probably going to want to redo your baptism. Just so that you know why you got baptized. And God will be good with that. God will be great with that. You need to uh, to pray a lot, and as a child, you can pray. Praying is no more than talking to me. It's no more than talking to anybody. The only difference is, is Jesus will really listen to you. As a child, Jesus loves hearing from you. It's giving me goosebumps right now. That's how much Jesus loves hearing from the babies. Jesus loves the babies talking to him. And you talk to Jesus. And you tell him, I ain't sure what they've got me doing here, Lord, but please help me. If I'm doing bad, Lord, please forgive me. But you're not doing bad. I promise you, you're not doing bad. And you talk to Jesus and he'll smile on you. He'll help you through it. He knows what's going on. Jesus knows everything. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every sparrow in the sky. Jesus knows everything. And he knows what you're going through. And he knows who's putting you through it. And he loves you regardless. So don't worry, little ones. You're not doing bad. You're being little children. That's what you're supposed to do. Be little children. I hope this uh, explains
explain a little bit to folks. I'll but explain something to the children. Remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. And it's a good day to be loved by the Lord.